What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala. Your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what, Terrence? Good old humor, man. Good old humor, man. Yeah. How many times that we've done this? We've done this intro. How many times? Let me think, huh? Let me think. Maybe could it be 100, 200, 300? No, four fucking hundred times. 400. 400 wow. times, man. Wow. This is the 400th episode of Yalla Bird. 400, yeah. Just imagine all this, all of you who have been here from the start or have binged backwards, you know. Mm. You've spent 400 hours at least voices. Yeah. Yeah, about at least 400 hours, I think. Yeah. Right, four at least four hundred hours. Least 400 uh. hours, and there's probably a bunch of people who have actually listened to all four hundred pe- episodes. Yeah, can you believe that? Insane, right? Yeah. I feel if I go talk, I can ask these people questions about myself that I wouldn't even know the answers to. Yeah, yeah, it'd be like they'd be like a Chat GPT. Yeah, that's of, why. <laughs> of yellow butt and that. Uh. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. know everything about my family, my pets, my no, my, not my pets and my peeves, my pet peeves. Yeah, same for you. Correct, correct. I would love to know who, yeah, who amongst our audience has listened to all episodes. Uh. All 400 yeah, episodes. It'll be pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. But how does it feel, Terrence? Do uh, we, do the, the first time we recorded, yeah, but do you ever think we will reach beyond like 50 or 100 episodes, let alone 400? Uh, no, I mean, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh. 400 mm. is like, whatever it is, it's like, you do 400 of anything in your life, you you must either really love it or you know you're fucking good at it or what lah. Right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if we're fucking good at it, but we love it lah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, actually, yeah. How many things in life have you actually done for four hundred times? You spend four hundred days with your girlfriend or wife or partner. Yeah, like, but days different lah. Uh, like you don't you don't actively wake up to a day. A day just yeah. happens. Correct, correct. You, you wake know? up lah. You wake up more than four hundred times. For sure. You're missing the point of the question, no. What have you proactively done 400 times that you didn't really need to do? Mm, that's a good that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Hardly anything, man. Yeah. It's very hard to think of anything. Yeah, yeah, I don't even know. Have I gone on 400 dates with my wife? Do you think you've hit a hockey ball like oh, yeah, 400 yeah, times? Definitely, definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah, okay, definitely. Yeah, yeah. That, one, that, was that was a horrible, like, horrible analogy. That's like taking steps up for <laughs> <That's laughs> like, a walk. Yeah. Like 10,000 <laughs> steps a day. <laughs> no, like, have you read 400 books? Mm, mm, interesting question, yeah. Have you read 400 books? Have yes. you been to 400 uh, uh, eateries, restaurants? Mm, mm. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? Who knows? 400. Uh, yes, 400 times. Welcome, everybody. And I think maybe, I don't know whether people are expecting, oh, 400 episodes, you're going to do something different. Huh? And I mean, we're kind of exactly the same as we were the episode before this. Lah. Correct, correct. I mean, but I, I just want to give a shout out to myself. I'm like half dying. I was half dying like the last few days mm. uh, under the weather a bit. I dragged myself out a bit because I know that this is this is what it means to people. Uh. So on the surface, it looks like everything's normal. Mm. Like everything's running as usual. But this guy is a warrior. This guy yeah. here. Me. And <laughs> and if you want to see the warrior face in the flesh, you can head on over to YouTube because this is something we are recording in our studio. Yeah. Uh, and we are going to keep doing this for future episodes, all future episodes. So mm-hmm. you can literally watch our faces as we talk. Yeah. So that was our plug lah. Oh, but that was a plug. Oh, that okay, was a plug. Okay. Wow, we totally skipped the small talk. Uh. Yeah. But how how do you how do you like how do you like being back in the studio, like back I, in the office? And I all? actually like it, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a it's a slightly different dynamic to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, slightly different, but I think it's it's refreshing, la. Maybe it's harder for us to like have very heated arguments like last time at that, la. You know, the excruciating the podcast. Excruciating podcast. Uh. Where, where, where because we're in each other's presence, so if we get angry and all that, it's like it's harder to just like, like like you know just. Uh, be at arm's length and throw insults at each other. La. Yeah, and plus now if you're saying something, yeah, I feel a bit more guilty not not uh, giving a shit and yeah, looking yeah. at my laptop because uh, when we're recording from our remote uh, yeah. places, it's easier. La. I can pretend that I'm looking to Terrence and caring about what he's saying. But actually, I think anyone who has watched our podcast uh, or snippets will tell you that it's so obvious because your eyes are so big. It's so easy to tell when you're not actually looking or you're reading something, your eyes are like tracking, <laughs> tracking, tracking. And you know, obviously this guy's not listening. That yeah. is true, la. that is true. La. But I mean, I, I'm sure there will be some excruciating debate that we have on this podcast face-to-face. Oh, yeah, 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 it, sure, will come, sure. it will come, it will come. It will come, it will come. So hold your it horses. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Just look out. La, excruciating debates coming soon. La. Yeah, yeah. So I guess the, the to wrap up the plug, it is to, of course, if you have enjoyed this podcast, if you have listened to 400 of them, 
it is it is it is your your duty to spread the love, man. Mm. To go tell at least one other person about it, and now yeah. you can also subscribe on YouTube. Yeah, if help, you haven't, help us hit five hundred. That's the next. Yeah, 500. I think that one that one is very deserving of a big like milestone celebration. I think that's what we say when we hit three hundred. We're no, like no, when no, we no. hit four hundred, it's a big milestone. You must be sensitive to cultural differences, like I'm Chinese. The number four <laughs> is a very is a very unlucky number for for us. Not something worth celebrating. So we know? won't record episode four four four, is it? We will, we will. But I'm saying not. We won't celebrate like four hundred, you know, because of uh, the. So you know, that's the reason, lah. Okay, okay, yeah. I didn't reason. tell you before this, lah. Sorry, uh, it's my Chinese privilege. Yeah, I Chinese privilege. <laughs> Fucked up. Yeah, Chinese privilege. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah, but um, yeah. I mean, that's kind of a you know expectations versus reality thing, lah. But mm. and that's a lot of what we're discussing today: expectations versus reality. Indeed, man. Yeah, for both our stories. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's jump right in, man. What's yeah. the first big story of uh, unmet expectations? Uh? The first first big story. I mean, like Singapore Airlines has been in the news for quite a bit uh, over the past few months because of uh, things to do with their food. Mm. There was the whole kerfuffle when they decided to use paper and cardboard uh, packaging for the food. Then there were pictures floating online of like food that didn't really look the most appetizing. Mm, mm. And the latest announcement is that SIA will be bringing back the appetizers for economy class years, uh, meals on medium and long haul flights and bread rolls on shorter flights. Mm, mm. And then there's a lot of commentary about why they are doing this. This is of course back uh, on the back of the recent announcement that SIA posted record profits. Mm. Of two point one six billion after three years of losses. Yeah, yeah. Two point one six billion. Correct. So I mean, full disclosure. I used to work for SIA. Mm -hmm. I was there for two years plus before I, uh, went to Scoot. Yeah. So uh, you, when you were there, uh, were there eight month bonuses? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man! I tell you, when I saw the news recently, I was like, oh, I mean, good for them, good for the employees there, good for the people. That, who I think are still there. Yeah. But no, my first year at SIA was at 2009 when there was a hiring freeze because of the economy crisis. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there was a pay cut. Yeah, yeah. So, so this, cut. this I guess this big bonus and all kind of came out of nowhere, lah, right? I think because everyone was thinking, oh, pandemic, all the travel industry was badly hit and all. Yeah. So I, I guess people are very surprised by how SIA has turned things around so quickly and has now basically rewarded everyone. Lah. But it has also left a bad taste in the in people's mouths, pun yeah, intended, yeah. when they also see the, you know, the presentation of their food, lah, right? Yeah. But I mean, the, it really was record profits. Uh, mm. The previous year, there was a $962 million net loss. Lah. Mm. So, I mean, you, when you look at all the comments going around, what are, what, what are some thoughts that come to mind? Lah? Um, yeah, I, I guess it's, it's the, like what you just summarized, mm. all the news was pointing towards like SQ, you know, doing so amazingly well. And great lah, great that they rewarded all the employees. Uh, because I, I'm sure there were uh, austerity measures taken during the pandemic as well, lah, right? Mm, mm, so mm. Com to compensate, uh, maybe compensate for that as well. This mm. eight-month bonus is maybe a bit more of an extraordinary kind of thing that they're doing. Uh, you know, thank you for riding out the the crisis with us, lah, right? Yeah. Uh, but that said, you know, they also, like I think in recent, like last year or something, launched a new campaign, right? Like uh, something about S SQ being uh, we are world class, mm. right? There was a video that was produced that uh, people also said was like, it smells very familiar. It's it's a lot like a uh -oh. Cathay Pacific. I think it was a Cathay Airlines mm. um, video as well. Uh. So all that said, you know, we are world class, uh, you know, record profits on it. That's why the reaction to, you know, uh, downsized meals or at least like pre like meals that look like they were packaged like in, a, in the SAF cookhouse. Mm. I think that didn't fly well with a lot of people. And it's true. You, know, you read articles and all the pictures of the food, it's really like those outration SAF, not even the cookhouse. It's like those outration when you go outfield, then they give you this little folded box with rice. Well, and, but what is outration, right? Terrence, for people listening who have no idea what the hell you're talking about? It means you. Like. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, hello, you're talking to the officer, no? <laughs> soft point, soft point. Hello, yeah, yeah. hello. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, oration is when uh, a lot of times when your whole battalion or whatever is out on a mission mm. Mm. and you can't, obviously you can't come back to the cookhouse and eat lunch and then go back out in the jungle again. So they'll actually outration, which means to cater food uh, that they pack mm. from the cookhouse to soldiers mm. outside. And it usually comes in boxes, like mm. like the ones that you see 
that SQ is using. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's probably the most uh, unappetizing way to consume your food ever. Like. Imagine mosquitoes, heat, uh, yeah, plastic fork, plastic spoon, that mm. little cardboard box sitting in your soiled and dirty underwear in the middle of a jungle, eating mm. that. Those are the kinds of memories that cardboard box evokes, uh, but which it, is not world class at all. No, but even then, like in the army, the thing is, your expectations when you're outfield is that you will eat combat rations. Ah, uh, yes. So yes. when you got out rations, it's actually mm. a leveling up. That is true, that is true. When you got the hot meal, the styrofoam box, you can be getting bitten by mosquitoes, it's really fucking shook, la, you know? Yeah. I think yeah. with SIA, it's the opposite. People go in with this expectation that the meals are going to be like, like what maybe people remember. Yeah. And then, yeah, like, the pictures, you can't deny that they look pretty, pretty crappy. Like. Underwhelming, to say the least. Yeah, underwhelming. But then, right, at the same time, like, I, I, I found it weird that um, the people who were saying, oh, you know, boycott SIA, mm. this is no longer world class and all. It, it feels like it was definitely a cost-cutting measure. Mm. This is just me, like, speculating, like, you know. Yeah. As much as SIA says publicly that they use the paper packaging for environmental sustainability and all, it does feel like, especially the fact that they posted record profits, it was a result of all these crazy cost-cutting measures. Yeah. So I almost feel that maybe, maybe they had, they had it, you know, we, we bite the bullet now, we save a shit ton of money, mm. cut our losses, profit happen, okay, make, make, like, give everyone the bonus, we get back, and so it's almost short-term they they suffer their brand a bit, but then they, in the long term, they're going to claw it back. Uh. Mm, possible. What you're bringing up is possible. Although they did say that the plastic packaging is supposedly uh, more expensive than the the current um, the current packaging that they use. Like. Then what was the defense? Because it's, it's a... Environmental it's a... sustainability. Yeah. But <sighs> but that's it. That's it. We also... Well, that's what we hear, like, right, from the yeah, PR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how about the cost, like when they were using um, cutlery, you know, and, and uh, like plastic bowls or plastic mm. sp- uh, or metal forks and spoons yeah, and things yeah. like that. Uh, I think those have to be washed, right? If I'm not they, wrong. Yeah, they have to be washed. Yeah, right? yeah. So there's that cost. There's that cost as well that might not have been factored in in the comparison. Yeah. So I can't say for certain that, that it it was cheaper or more expensive like, in my mind. But, you know, if you take what they say at face value, uh, the cost is the cost, but if the product looks so crappy uh, and it, that's a detriment to your brand, is it even worth that cost-cutting measure, la, right? Yeah, la, yeah. La. yeah la. So, I mean, again, full disclosure, even though I worked at SIA, I was nowhere ever close to the departments that handle the food or the catering or anything. So, I'm as clueless as anyone. La. Yeah. Uh, I'm just like, whatever I say, it might be influenced a bit by my limited time in the aviation industry. Yeah. But I just, the thing that stuck out to me most is like... Uh, like, I know the, the the fact that they made so much profit is pissing people off even more. But to me, it's like, it's a consequence. Right? Mm. All these all these cost-cutting measures, to change the food on any given airline, it takes a long time. No? Mm. I think even mm. to introduce this new dish, it takes a super long time because it needs yeah. to get clearance, safety, you know, operationalizing it to serve like thousands of customers a day. Yeah. It takes also, everything that was done that resulted in the meals now were probably planned like months ago, lah. You mean talking about way, even way before pandemic? Way oh no, before no, no. I think I think maybe at the start of pandemic, ah, okay, when okay. they knew okay, the world is going to shit, people are not going to fly. We need to save money, mm. so all that kicked in, and that helped taper the amount of losses. And then now, once we, the demand is back, your costs maybe have been brought down a lot. We increased demand, then you got bigger profits, uh. mm. So that's why, like, like when I read the comments, I'm like, but this these kind of things don't just happen overnight, right? Correct, correct. Right, yeah. so there, like, there, there was not that much, like, people were just saying boycott SIA now. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, even then, I, I will say that whenever I'm looking for flights, I hardly ever get SIA. La. Because of the price. La. Yeah. Yeah. There's a premium, la. there's an SQ premium that you pay for. Yeah. La. Yeah. So that causes the problem. La. But you think that, um, you know, we always talk about, like, how when we talk about sustainability and recycling and all these things, uh, the owners shouldn't be on the individual to, to do it because it's such a... It's a it's a drop of water in the ocean. Like, That's why you still use strength. straws every day, like, Straws, yeah, yeah. People yeah, use straws, straws yeah. and, and, and things like that, like, uh, Correct. Uh. Um so does it matter that uh now people are not happy that SQ is trying this sustainability method, then now they're demanding that they go back to, you know, the less sustainable way? 
But like, so isn't it, is it even clear that the less, the previous way was less sustainable and whether the new way is more sustainable? I'm just taking what they say at face value. Like, uh, and I'm, I'm assuming because it's like, you know, cardboard is disposable, blah, blah. I think because the price, it still feels like super expensive. Like. Mm. So then if you're paying premium, you do have a lot of premium offerings in the market that are sustainable, but premium. Like. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and, and I guess air travel in itself is inherently not a very... Uh, carbon friendly, carbon footprint friendly mm. activity. Mm. So maybe there's that feeling of you already, you're already out there in the world burning fuel to travel around the world and all. Mm. Why, why pretend like using one cardboard, uh, cardboard bowl will save the world, uh, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe but that's the, the, but the that's fuel. the thing about about the airlines, lah. There's this one anecdote. Uh, I think uh, from the sixties or seventies that. U.S. Airways or something. I think in one of the articles, it was quoted by the Mile Lion, la, who is yeah. this travel uh, person, uh, travel re- influencer. Mm. So mm. apparently, like there was a famous story about American Airlines uh, in the 1980s where they discovered that just removing one olive mm. from every passenger salad would reduce its cost by 40000 mm. Uh And that's 40000 in the 80s. La. Yeah. So I think that's the thing, right? Like You can say... Whether this small thing will actually change anything, but airlines, they fucking fly like how many million people a year? Mm-hmm. Right, so um, I think there's a number also, like if they flew 26.5 million passengers last year. No? Mm-hmm. Even if you can save $1 per passenger, yeah, that's $26.5 million. Correct, correct. But So you're saying that if you were, let's say you were sitting SI economy class and all, mm. and that paper packaging came to you, Mm. You I'll flip like, table lah. You flip, flip, flip table lah. Flip your, flip your little <laughs> tray table. <laughs> yeah, <la. that's> like, <laughs> You'll be unhappy. I mean, no, okay. I would say that my expectation would be like, hey, uh, this is not something that I was expecting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and that there would be that 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 in, uh, disconnect lah. I see, I see. I, I, for me, I'm not too mad about the pla- the paper packaging and all that lah. I'm uh-huh. not too. As in, I'm not. I don't think it's a terrible thing. Yeah, I think there are pros and cons, whether it's the environment or, or you know, uh, just easier to for everything to be clear, lah, right? You know, mm. the last time with cutlery, whenever cutlery drops, then you have to pick it up because it's like you know, it's solid kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I guess with cardboard, it's a bit less uh less troublesome, lah. But I think my bigger thing that I read from the article mm. was that they had seems like they had eliminated hot towels. And mm. bread rolls from and economy. The buns, la, right. And the buns. And I like, yeah. I did not know that because obviously I haven't said SI economy mm. for a while, la, right? Mm. But yeah, I did not know that. I thought hot towels were a trademark SQ thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, to me, I, that's a bigger crime, man. Correct. When I read that also, right, I'm like, what la way? Like, I think anyone who has ever flown SI, you remember the feeling of that hot towel on your face. Yeah. On your hands. Yeah. On your body. Yeah. You know, and then you take that away, right? And it's, it's served to you with little tongs. Yeah, with little tongs. And by one they, of the S2 yeah, They collect it right? also with little tongs, right? Yeah. They yeah. collect it with little So you take that away, then you're like, eh, hey, what's like right? It's like a warm hug from the cabin crew, right? <laughs> <It's> Almost. <laughs> then you just put it over your face. Yeah. All the stress of like getting to your gate and all that just melts away. It's beautiful. Yeah, and then the buns, it was the yeah. buns with the butter, lah, right? Correct, yeah. And those buns were. I mean, they were also like very, very welcome, lah. Yeah. Uh, so. So as as yeah, to quote Braveheart, lah, you can take my packaging, but you will never take my buns or hot towels. Yeah. Paraphrasing. Paraphrasing. Yeah, yeah, paraphrasing. Yeah. I don't think Braveheart would have been <laughs> as convincing if that was the line, <laughs> But but then so then like uh, a lot of the complaints was that okay, even without that aside, right? The yeah. food still looked like miserable. Not, right? Miserable. Yeah. So that's where like, is it does. Is SIA is SIA kind of wrong? So I think that's why like I found it weird. Like we just came out of the pandemic. Another yeah. thing that struck me was like, wow, this is if it's so easy to forget that even last year travel was still not uh, yeah. it was still pe- getting back to normal. Yeah, like, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But it just feels like wow, we are I guess we are back to normal. No, and people are revenge traveling. La. They're like uh, like traveling like mad to make up for the last few years of their lives that they lost, like, right? Revenge traveling. Yeah, revenge uh, traveling. Exactly. So so it's uh I, I'm not too surprised. And uh yeah, SQ tickets are not cheap, man. You know, I, I think I was on the website sometime ago looking. Yeah, it's it, they're always at a premium like, compared to everything else. Like, right. And like a significant premium, like, right? Yeah. So so I'm just looking on uh one of those aggregator websites right now mm, mm. and just like looking at Singapore Paris in August. 
Yeah. Uh, Air France, the lowest price is a thousand four hundred and forty-four. SIA looks like the lowest price is two thousand seven hundred. Yeah. Then you look at it, you're like, oh shit. Uh, that is a huge premium, lah. Mm-hmm. A huge premium, and both non-stop. Yeah. Both direct. Yeah. But when do you think um, why do you think Singaporeans care so much? Uh? It seems like I don't know. Uh, we we talked about this a little bit before. Why is it that Singaporeans care so much about what SQ? puts out there to the world compared to like an American you know talking about Delta or US Airways or whatever because what else do we have as a country Terrence <laughs> that we have exported internationally yeah what else uh, we have Benjamin King uh, but he's like Singapore Airlines I'm pretty sure is is like any most countries you go in the world yeah they won't know yeah. Singapore Airlines true, true they have that brand yeah. You fly Singapore Airlines, right? You immediately see in a certain way. Mm. So maybe it's, maybe it's the deep down the pride that everybody has. The pride, la, yeah. And it's the name of your country is in the in the, in the the name of the the airline as well, la, right? Mm. Singapore Airlines. But do you care or not? Do I care? Uh, only insofar as I, if I'm traveling on Singapore Airlines, la, yeah. You mean like if you're not traveling, you don't care if the meals are that? If this I'm is your country, country's I... national carrier yeah. that has been the bastion of Singapore, the Singapore spirit, no, for mm. years, no, mm, mm. and like you are okay with people seeing the meals like that. Uh, actually, the other thing that also came through came to my mind was that uh, some of our Singapore food, lah, right? Mm. Some of our Singapore food, uh, quite interestingly, it actually tastes better after you like let it sit in the packaging for a while. You know, mm. usually take out food like it gets soggy and it's like. Mm nasty and it's not nice you know with, when you, especially with pasta and all these western style uh. meals la. but I feel like there are things like mee siam uh, hokkien mee and all that uh. that the longer it sits in the packaging soaking out the moisture and everything right actually yeah. tastes better so maybe there that's why I said there might be some pros to using this packaging as opposed to like the, the what they used to use la. you're the first person I've ever heard say that <laughs> the only thing I can compare is when I froze the chai peng from near our office the amazing chai peng for yeah. four months and unfroze it and heated it up and it was still magical. Yeah, yeah, but you're not a, you're not a foodie, foodie kind of, right? I, uh, even my wife, who's a foodie, uh, said it was, it was amazing. No, no, but I'm saying you don't, you don't analyse your, you know, the taste of your food to that level. I right? mean, now I'm a bit more refined. Oh, okay, I'm okay, a bit okay. more refined. So to you, there's nothing that actually tastes better after you take it, you take it out. La. I think, okay, I think if, it, if the, if the food sits separately, like curry sits like curry, fried rice sits like fried rice, I think okay. But if you're saying like rice with curry, like Hokkien Mee, then the fucking noodles will just become like balloons, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's where it's like, it's a different kind of experience. Uh. But it's like soggy. You do Okay, you, do you prefer al dente in general or more so soggy? So, so Hokkien Mee comes in different flavors also. Uh. There's like the drier ones, the wetter yeah. ones and all that. Yeah, so you prefer the wetter ones? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a wet, I'm a wet kind but, of and when person. But when it's soaked? So yeah, I like it. I overnight? Like it Not, I don't know overnight, la, but at least you let it sit in the packet. It still tastes as better even maybe as good if not better than what it was when is you it? it yeah 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 give it a try give it a try sometime Hokkien I, Mi I'll, I'll recommend some places to you yeah 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 Hokkien so Mi. you buy it specifically and then like you look forward to the leftovers lah. Uh, not say look for leftovers but I know that if I eat it like a few hours later it will still be pretty freaking awesome but how much Singaporean food is there on Singapore Airlines <laughs> exactly yeah, that, that's, the, that's one thing because I think there are people complaining that uh Certain types of cuisine don't sit well in the kind of packaging that they they have, like, right? And also airline food, it is the the makeup is a lot different. Or from what I heard from mm. my colleagues who used to look over airline food, there's a lot more salt. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. when you are higher in a pressurized cabin, your taste buds don't uh work as well. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I've heard that one as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but I mean, I like. Am I am I okay with the food looking good? I mean, I think. I'm I'm not okay only in the sense that okay you are paying a premium amount, so then you also you have expectations that like I wouldn't fly SI in mm, general. Mm, mm. Uh, but if you're paying that much, if I was a customer, I think I also would feel like I mean okay on one hand you want to complain about food also, it's 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 a bit like uh how you say uh, not say touchy. Mm. Uh, I don't think anyone woke would be saying hey there are kids in Africa don't have food you shut up about your airline food. Yeah, there might be some, but then. It just feels like it's a it's an expectation versus reality, lah. Mm-hmm. But that's a that's the difficulty, lah, of, of set, trying to satisfy everyone. Uh, but I would say, yeah, lah. It, given that they promised that we are world class, or you know, the campaign was about being world class. Mm. I think they need to. Uh, they cannot 
default to what other airlines are doing. La. But So then what do you think about them bringing back the appetizers, saying they took on customer feedback and all? Good lah. Good. So that's why, it's because of things like that, so I think this was like a plan. Uh. They're like, okay, you know, we need to bite the bullet now. We cut the cost. Yeah. We Our bad branding will take a hit. But we launch this in February because the campaign came out in February. Mm, right? Okay. The financial year will end in March. Yeah. The profits declared in April. Uh. So it's just that that two months you tahan a bit, you tahan a bit. Then after that, things are going to get back to normal. They're already going to bring it back. So uh. it feels like it was a plan. You know, like, okay, mm. we will just cut costs. February, we launch this campaign. Yeah. It's going to stay for the rest of the year. Maybe by the end of the year, they'll bring back everything and people will be saying, I love mm. fucking Singapore Airlines. Yeah, possibly because, yeah, a lot of people weren't even traveling right last year. Yeah, exactly. So they wouldn't, like me, wouldn't have even have known of the disappearance of bread rolls and hot towels. Yeah. Which uh, would be like outrageous now la, when you yeah. think about it. Yeah. And then also, I know airline profits, I think internally, from what I recall, sometimes it is calculated when the cost comes in. Sometimes it's calculated when the plane is flown, when the flight is flown. Ah, okay. So this profit, uh, I'm not really sure. There's probably some standard. Yeah. But it's also something to think about. Like, if all the, mm. the profits came in for tickets that were f- bought in up till March 31st, yeah. then it means there will be a lot of people flying after April when they are like uh, fucking putting back the appetizers. Or, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. So so that's why it feels like, hmm, let me, let me put on my airline hat uh, and think, what would be the strategy to survive the pandemic? Yeah. And now 8-month bonus, could a budget carrier, the staff also getting 6-month bonus. <laughs> then you so, were also there. Yeah, I was also there. And you didn't get the 6-month bonus. I didn't get bonus. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it says something it's more, not so much about the airlines but it's about the people or you, uh, you. <laughs> yeah maybe yeah. they probably realise like fuck man we paid for this guy's education and all and, and what's he doing Yeah, uh, making videos shitting, now shitting on our, our meals uh. yeah shitting on our meals <laughs> but I mean like if if they really can carry on this way already having profit so big I think if it's a record profit for them means it's mm. probably like up there in terms of the profit for any airline. Because mm. I think SIA has been the most profitable airline for the longest fucking time. Yeah, yeah. So maybe they are like, okay, we are back. This is their campaign. February, yeah. we are world class. April, we just made $2 billion. Yeah. And then by December, it'll be like kings again. Yeah, and we got hot towels back. Man. Yeah, we got Yo. hot towels, you know, scented hot towels. <laughs> you know, just like bigger hot towels so you can wrap your whole body inside. Yeah, wow. Oh, freaking awesome, man. Yeah, they got all this. I think they, I won't be surprised, man. Plan. They got all this up their sleeve already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now they're saying, okay, we take customer feedback. We're going to mm. bring back the towels, the buns. Yeah. We're back, guys. We're back. And back. we got $2.16 billion. Yeah. In the bank. In the bank. They were giving out to employees. Yeah. In the bank, man. Because, mm. I mean, the good thing is they are bringing it back. La. Yeah, correct. Right. They are bringing it back. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Uh. Yeah, let us know anybody who has flown SQ recently. Mm. And what was your experience with the bread rolls and the hot towels and the, the paper packaging? Mm. Yeah, that would be pretty mm. interesting mm. to hear. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, we were talking about expectations meeting reality. Uh, this is another case, uh, another national related issue where expectations did not meet, the, our reality did not meet expectations, uh, so to speak. Mm. Right. And uh, what is this case? I know it's very dear to your heart, so please... Yeah, I think I've suggested talking about this multiple for times, many times, <laughs> but it's always downvoted by Terence. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, but now I think uh, he suggested it, and I'm like, okay, let's talk about this shit. Yeah, yeah. It is um the the latest announcement uh, and the past few months concerning the Singapore national football team mm. Uh, and I think the latest announcement just today was that uh the FAS acting president mm. Bernard Tan, um has kind of like spoken up a, a, about their recent plans for the Unleash the Raw National Project. Mm, okay. Uh, which is the goal to, you know, like really do a review of the whole FAS, um, the pulling out of the national team from the upcoming international to- uh, tournaments until we are, and I air quote, competitive again. Mm, mm. And the statement that, you know, Singapore should revisit having more naturalized players to improve our national football team. Yeah. And yeah. by naturalized is like bringing in people from abroad, naturalizing them into like being Singaporean and getting mm. them to play for the team. Yeah, correct. And this is off the back of their dismal performance in the SEA Games. Yes. 7-0, right? 7-0. And yeah. they lost 4-1 to Malaysia also. Yeah. They finished last in the group. Yeah. So, <sighs> I think the my... I, I didn't really think that this was an interesting thing to talk about until 
all this uh, until the FAS president himself came forward and, and made some statements and uh, kind of dissected like what their plans are going forward. Lah. And mm. uh, I guess what we're here to discuss is like uh, essentially what do you think of those plans? Lah? So, yeah, so so the, the, the thing is about like this, it, uh, I mean, th- th- there were a bunch of things um, uh, proposed and I also don't know how to talk about this apart from just you know, like going down and maybe the high level thoughts about it. Okay, yeah. so maybe to, to give context, like, what is your relationship with like, national football and national sports? Uh, I mean, I'm of that, that Malaysia Cup, uh. 1994. Uh, that, that, was it 94? 94, 94, right? That, 94, uh, 94. League, league and Cup double, right? Yeah. They did, yeah. 4-0 Pahang. Yeah. Uh, Amas uh, Saad, hat-trick. Uh, dream Team, then the Dream Team fell apart, then the following year, they, you know, like, they got all the Douglas Moore, there's mm. a coach, and... and uh, I think Alistair Edwards betrayed us and joined Selangor. Then all the scandals, uh, Michael Vanna. Michael Vanna, Abbasad. Uh, uh, Abbasad yeah. was after, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was of that generation, like Malik Awa, uh, you know, uh, Rafi Ali. Yeah. Sundra Muti. Yeah. Bawad Abu Sabah. Oh, peace, la wey, those names. Them. So oh, yeah, as, as even I was just reading this, about this and it all, that, that that song came to my mind. Do you remember? Yeah. That dream team song. Yeah. I want everybody feel the power. You can and feel the steam. It's the dream team. And then they were all yeah, in the 80s horrible fashion. Horrible singing voice. Yeah, horrible singing to like really cheesy rock music. Yeah, if yeah. you can find it on, on YouTube, go check it, it out. Is it is pretty solid. Cool. Yeah, solid. But yeah, I was on that era. So, of course, like the Singapore team and football, all that is very dear to my heart. But... I think it's been like uh, in all the ensuing years when we left the Malaysia Cup and all, it's slowly been dying bit by bit la, mm. since then. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, same for me. La. Like, my one of the biggest regrets for me is that I never saw a Malaysia Cup game live in the Ooh, 90s. Painful. Never. Yeah. I did. At I did, Kalang. Yeah. You at, at Kalang Stadium? Yeah, la. yeah, Kalang Stadium. And it was yeah. shook. La. It was exactly what you imagined it was. Like, oh, yeah. wow, the Kalang Raw. For those of you who were born maybe after the 90s and have no idea what we're talking about, yeah. you can look up clips on YouTube. Yeah. It was insane. 55,000 people at Kalang. Packed to the brim. Man. Packed, Packed to, the, to brim. the brim. Screaming like. their heads out. Yeah. And the country kind of like stopped, la, right? Yeah, they rallied behind behind the oh, team oh, every yeah. time there was a match. And they were good. La. Yeah. They, were, and, they were good. And when there when they were, weren't even live telecasts on TV, I would listen to the radio, the radio broadcast of the match. I'd be like sitting at home listening to the radio broadcast and like be screaming every time Singapore scores a goal. And Stephen Tan, super sub Stephen Tan comes in and scores a goal. Right, those yeah. are the days. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, Stephen Tan, yeah, Stephen super Tan, sub. super sub. Yeah, yeah. The only Guna soldier of Singapore. Yeah, but yeah, yeah I mean, but correct lah. So those were the days, and I, I, I look back at them very fondly, and I always wonder like, wow, it's such a departure from what football is. For Singapore football is today for young people mm. and it, it's like they uh, it's so sad that they they have, will have never experienced something like that uh, you yeah know, because in even in the sport. years even in the years after the Malaysia Cup in the early 2000s we were still doing well regionally you know, yeah, we yeah, win yeah. the Tiger Cup Suzuki Cup, and all Suzuki that, right? Cup and all. but now this is like fucking unbelievable la. so so for me yeah I've been a fan uh, I mean I got a chance to play uh, sports hockey mm. uh, at at uh, some national levels. Uh, so what's it have to do with uh, No, football? because I will go into the the issues that were there uh, in the hockey hockey federation. Okay, okay, okay. okay that, you got to pass, pass. I, I know. Like, I, I know, just need to want to clarify first know, before you humble break. I know when I was bringing this up, uh, I had to think very strategically yeah. because I know Terrence is gonna make noise. <laughs> this is soccer, okay? This is not hockey. <laughs> but there are very similar kind of things that you can see here. La. Okay, uh, it's a sport. It's a, a ball. Sport. It's a sport. <laughs> it's a ball. Uh, the, the the okay. So what what annoyed me about this article, right? Is like yeah. the thing. One of the things saying we should revisit having more naturalized players to improve our national football team. Mm. That pisses me off, lah. Oh really? Because it's just ignoring the fact that it's not say Singapore doesn't have talent. Mm. It is because they are not cultivated. They 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 the the the. the um, it feels like this is a systemic problem. No? Mm. It's not just that, oh, we need these quick fixes, bring in this. We've been doing that for years. And he was saying that, okay, right now, there's only like uh, maybe one in the past few years. And then one example was like, you know, Tan cited the 2022 AFF Mitsubishi Cup group stage match between Malaysia and Singapore, which saw Malaysia winning 4-1. Uh. All of Malaysia's goal scorers were naturalized players. Yeah. Um. So that's why 
we need naturalized players because we've only had one over the last 10 years. Yeah. I think we need to revisit this. Yeah. And that pisses the shit out of me. Why? 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 Because it's... Isn't, saying... that, isn't that the same argument as uh, we need foreign talent to live in Singapore and work in Singapore? And, and, and we don't have the talent to, you know, to fight in the global economy. But I mean, Singapore is also facing a manpower shortage, lah, right? You can yes. argue that, you can argue that, okay, uh, there's a talent shortage, mm. but it almost feels like the talent shortage is because we need talent quick in the in the labor force, lah. Yeah. This football thing, okay, maybe indirectly he's saying if we, the quickest way to get talented people in is to naturalize them. Mm. But then also, FIFA's rules is that over the past decade, you must have lived and played in the country for at least five years to be eligible for a national team. Uh, yeah. So even that's not a short-term fix. Yeah. So when I see things like this, then they're talking about, you know, like training players to be more physically fit for international tournaments. Mm. What, what, what the fuck? A coach is saying that maybe we need to train our players to be more physically fit for international tournaments. Yeah. Only now they realize it, is it? No, but but going back to what you said, like, is it, it's a systemic thing, right? Yeah. Uh, I think both of what you raised are, uh, can be traced back to systemic issues. La. Yeah. One is that the current league that we have, the SPL, is not attractive enough for people to come and play for like five years straight. Mm. Then, then they stay and then they decide, okay, Singapore's great, I want to make it uh, my home, la, right? Yeah. Because whatever it is, la, the pay or they just don't want to stay, uh, they don't want to compete in the SPL and, and things like that because it's, it's, there's uh, greener pastures elsewhere. So that's one issue, right? The mm. SPL, the, the local league that we have. Uh, then the other thing about... What's your second point? Sorry. I, I uh, what was my second point? Yeah. Uh, fuck. Uh, oh, the fitness. The fitness, yes. Fitness, yes the fitness yes, are correct, fitness. correct. So he raises a very specific point that they only play about 24 games for mm. a season. And those are very drawn out over quite a long period or so, right? Mm. Uh, and, and he's saying that they probably need like 10 games more per season to really like... Uh, to, to build up that match fitness and that recovery and then the whole cycle of under, of getting into the rhythm. Because I think yeah. in a lot of sports, uh, rhythm and momentum matters, right? Mm. So it's like how the World Cup, the Qatar World Cup took place in the middle of the season and it was like such a long break. And I think a lot of footballers, you know, whether they 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 were over overstretched or got injured and things like that, it's partially because of that. that there was a break in the momentum of the season and people weren't accustomed to it mm. and all that. So... Yeah, you know, again, it's a more of a systemic thing where the league doesn't have enough uh, resources or enough teams and all that to put together such a long season like, or sustain interest in such a long season, like, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, like so, uh, other things he said also, you know, Tan also talked about the use of proper tactics and strategy. <laughs> the Singapore national team needs to be quite clever in the way we play. Mm. And this is, I quote, uh, one of the things we must admit is that if we are playing a better team, yeah. we need to actually organize ourselves to be quite hard to beat. Yeah, yeah, Terrence, <laughs> I think if I ask my mother that also, uh, uh, when we are playing a better team, should we organize ourselves to be harder to beat? Uh, I think uh, she would be, yes, you idiot. Why are you asking me that kind of stupid questions? Okay, uh, again, counterpoint. It might sound very basic, like what he's saying, but maybe he is, because he is talking, he, he could be thinking of it at a very, very tactical level, uh, right? Mm. Uh, and and oh, it's only in recent years where I also beyond just watching football matches, I have started to watch a bit more of the, you know, explaining Pep Guardiola's tactics versus Jurgen Klopp and things like that. Mm. And uh, you know the like Eric Ten Hag, what he means by like the the you know how to defend off the ball and stuff like that. Mm. So there are techniques uh, that uh, a lot of modern coaches use. Uh, very, they are very specific. Like, like what, what I understand from friends who used to play football at quite high levels, that last time training was just, now here's the ball, practice vol yeah. some volleys, and then yeah. after that, play a match, okay, that's training. Yeah. But now it's really like, even at a kid's level, it's really about understanding your positioning, your tactics, what you do off the ball, and how do you maintain your, you know, your structure, and what do you do when, when let's say, you're dispossessed of the ball suddenly, and then your defense is caught off guard, what do you do? So it goes down to that granular level that maybe you and I were like from that, Malaysia Cup listen but to Darren, radio era. You, you say the kids these days are learning that. Yeah. They got apply the, the what they learn or I don't know. La. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, they yeah. do ten year series yeah. over and over again. Yeah. But on the pitch then you don't understand. Yeah. But but that's what I'm saying is that maybe he explaining it like that, it sounds kinda of silly. It sounds like kinda of obvious. But actually in his mind maybe he's talking about one of those things like like, like, like... I don't know, man. Like, yeah. it's just... I know there's a petition going around to fire the whole of FAS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. So, 
so I mean the the thing is like even the whole unleash the raw thing, right? Yeah. I mean, what do you know about it? Eh? Uh, not, nothing actually. Before until before until this lah. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. So I mean, apparently it is uh it it was something that um was in the works already. Mm. Uh, the unleash the raw thing. Yeah. And then now it's gonna push forward despite the dismal showing at the Sea Games lah. Yeah. But then you know the fact that they have pulled out of international competitions until they're competitive again. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of that, Terence? Uh, yeah, it seems to run counter to a lot of things that they're talking about, lah, where they need... seems like the players do need more uh, match experience to mm. build fitness and get their... you know, get the momentum going. So, yeah, it, it does seem a bit like, um, okay, everybody where... It's, it's like what I tell... You know, if you're trying to, like, uh, lecture a child or that, and the child is like, not cooperating on it. They say, okay, taking the toy away from you now. Mm. Nobody gets a toy. Everybody, everybody, because you guys are all quarreling, so nobody gets a toy. You know, I keep the toy. Mm. That's what it feels like. A little bit like uh, punishing the team a little bit for for what is, what like what we've talked about, a very systemic issue, la, right? Mm. But so for you, like, you, you you had this smirk when you said fire the SAF, uh, FAS, SAF, for instance. Uh. Fire the FAS and everything. La. What is your plan to get people excited about football again. If you were tomorrow, Harish Tilani nominated as a president okay. of uh, FAS because of, of his FAS. experience as in the, at a national level playing hockey. <laughs> <laughs> that he can't keep, he can't keep it to himself. Oh, I forgot to bring himself. up why I brought that up. Uh, I, that, was, that was my subtle <laughs> no, call out. <laughs> because the thing is, like, um, uh, I remember back then, we were always told that well, the gulf between men's hockey in Singapore and the other countries like Malaysia, adult men's hockey is like super huge, lah, right? Yeah, yeah. But after playing a bit and playing against Malaysia, the gap when you're younger is actually not that big. No? Mm. It just grows like to be a mile wide as as the teams get uh, older. Lah. So what what is the big difference between adult adult players? I mean, in Singapore, countries? you you have uh, I, I think sports in general is not seen as the best career choice. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, and then you also have army, which can be quite disruptive, okay. whichever way you look at it. Yep. And then the, 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 I remember back then, I don't know how it is now, even the training and all was not the most sy- uh, sy- systemic. La. Not the most systematic. Structured. Yeah. Not the most systematic. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Not the yeah. most systematic. Yeah. Not the most structured. And it was very like, okay, you got tournament coming. Let's just train these these few weeks before, and then we go lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the thing is, if I was the FAS president with my limited uh, age group, <laughs> key experience, key experience. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think these kind of things it is really a long term thing. Not to say that they don't have long term plans. We heard about what goal twenty ten. Goal twenty ten. Wow, fucking you dug that up from nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, goal twenty ten. Eh? Then goal twenty twenty two or something. Yeah, yeah. Right, but but. Like it really is an investment, and you kind of need to stick to it, lah. Mm. Uh, and be very, very militant about progress, lah. I think the past what fifteen years is almost like the standard of football has been going down and down yeah. and down. Yeah, which is very right. disappointing because I guess the best example for long term plans is the German football team, lah. Right? Mm. You know the team mm. that won the World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they trace back. It was like a fifteen year project in the making. Mm. Uh, and and something really needs to change, lah. And mm. That's why I think the leadership of FAS being changed, I think it can be a good thing. Yeah. But then who's coming in? Yeah. But, but I mean, Germany has a heritage of mm. like fo- a, a, a great football achievements. Yeah, la, and, right? and they have the, the league. Like, you can build yeah, a career you can build a around career, it. You can, yeah, you, can, you, have, you have a future as a footballer if you play in Germany or you get scouted to play in Europe or something. La. Yeah. Whereas in Singapore, I mean, yeah, la, you could go to neighboring countries or if you're lucky, you get you know called up to Portugal or or a Dutch side or something like right. Yeah, like, yeah. I think Fundy Sun has. Uh, but yeah, it's it's. I don't know, man. It's a it's a very tough one. I'm just wondering, like, I'm just wondering. Uh, based on my experience as a non, uh, completely like uh, non-national, uh, maybe only in my in my housing estate, mm. like, I play at that level of football. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like one of the top semi pro, la, Semi pro, <laughs> semi pro, semi pro, semi pro in my housing estate, la. Uh, is it also? Do you think? You could trace it to the fact that uh, it's very expensive to watch football in Singapore. Like EPL, World Cup, all these things. Because last time, oh. long time, donkey years ago, 
Uh, it was all free, right? It was all like, oh, free to air TV or Channel 12. My God, Channel 12, remember that? Yeah, it used to be, all these sporting events used to be free to watch and people became fans very easily, lah, right? Uh, because, you know, your, your classmates watch, you watch together, you go to, and I remember going to a school chalet and, oh, let's watch the the Man U Newcastle FA Cup uh, uh, match on, or was it the, what, the not the FA Cup, the, the, the charity show, charity mm. show match on TV. And yeah, it's just an activity that you just, by the way, do lah. Whereas now it's like, oh, you got to subscribe to Starhub Plus and then Premier League plan. But at the plan, same you know, time, uh, I mean, I've heard through the grapevine that people also can stream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the access thing is a big thing lah. Yeah. Because you can also watch a lot of highlights online. You, you can even follow the player's Instagram. Man. True, true. Right. That's true. There's yeah. actually more ways to engage with a club. Yeah. Than, like, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, so then like... Uh, so the argument doesn't really hold water that way. Lah. I mean, right. I don't know. Like, like it, I think the whole thing about the career and all that, it is a, it is a thing, lah, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, even you see it in media, right? Like, why are we not producing like what award winning films and shit like that? Mm-hmm. It's because it is not the easiest thing to sustain. Yeah. And as much as you can be a brilliant filmmaker and all, you do need the whole ecosystem. La. Yeah. That's why like I was thinking like, can you imagine like Iksan Fandi and Irfan Fandi and all? You know, their dad is a legend, right? Yeah. And for them they end C games losing seven, seven one. Seven nil. Seven yeah. nil. And I mean, like uh up till a few years ago they were regarded quite highly internationally yeah. right yeah, yeah yeah so oh it just feels like sad yeah, this football it's uh sad lah but at the same time uh you know you you can have these big losses and you can still overall guide everyone towards a more positive ending like i mean case in point manchester united yesterday mm. they mm. finished fourth in the premier league and yeah. they qualified for the champions league again yeah under this coach in his first season eric ten Hag. And in this season, they've also lost, what, 7-1? Or is it 7-0? Seven, 7-0. Seven 7-0 seven zero. Seven zero to Against Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, they've had huge losses like that. But uh, did they pull out from the Premier League? Yeah, they did not pull out anything. Did in fact, out? if anything, I think what uh, from what anecdotes I've heard is that he actually makes the players train harder, like run more the next, the next day, day they after all, big yeah. losses. They all, right? to, they all have to come back and run the distance that uh, the their opponents, ran. opponents ran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so there are... I don't think a big loss is the end of the world and that doesn't mean that you shut down everything. Like, it's, it's kind of like uh, you can channel that frustration and energy towards uh, getting better, like, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I am a bit shocked that they, oh, okay, we're just pulling out all competitions as opposed to, okay, let's really put down some KPIs and some things you need to hit before the end of the season, like, right? Yeah. Which, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you look at Manchester United, qualified for Champions League, they won the trophy already and they are in the final of the FA Cup. Yeah. So even the same season that they've lost 7-0 to Liverpool and uh, also to very big losses to, mm. I think, other uh, top teams or so. Man City? Man City, Newcastle also, right? They also lost Yeah, lost Newcastle also big. lost yeah. big, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's possible uh, that there will be ups and downs in the same season and uh, you kind of got to ride it out uh, as opposed to run away from it. Uh. Yeah. I mean, uh, maybe maybe there needs to be like this real institute where maybe like a like a big house, you know, where all the players can stay. But where would you find a house in Singapore that, I don't know, you can fit like 10 football fields around the house? Do you know or not, Terrence? So they can have training in yeah. one of the football fields. Uh. Yeah. If only we had a place like that. You know? One, yeah. Where? Uh? Yeah. Fuck, man. Maybe that is the solution, you know? Yeah, like solution. just one house, maybe on high raised ground so yeah. you can watch all the football being played around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, maybe, maybe for all you know, this is the first of many announcements. <laughs> the next one in July, we'll hear that there'll be a new footballing facility At for the Singapore football team. right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's all planned. It's all planned. It's folks. all planned. It's all part of the plan. You yeah. don't know. You know, it's highly improper of us to be talking about it now while the yeah. review is being carried yeah. out. But it's They'll all part come of the plan. Out, yeah, on the interior of 26 right out is, is state-of-the-art footballing uh, equipment. <laughs> you know, like all these... Trees have been cleared to build football fields. All the players will stay at 31 right out. It's been in the works for three years. And we did not reveal it until after yeah, the season. Right. Like, yeah. yeah, you know. It's highly improper. Yeah, these are all the good it. reasons why why there will be a committee and, and yeah. we wanted to reveal it during parliament. Yeah, but you all spoiled the, yeah, spoil the surprise yourself. <laughs> Shame on you all. 
Spoil the surprise. Oh, love it. <laughs> Fuck, man. That would be epic. Bro. That's like, like 4D chess. Yeah. Like 4D chess <laughs> by right. Singapore authorities. Like, They're oh. clearing trees now, like fucking <laughs> drawing the lines on the football pitches. Or... <laughs> you know, Gerard, Kenneth Gerard and Puss come. Yeah. What is this football field? Yeah, being? why are there white rectangles being they? drawn in the grass? Yeah. Uh, oh, love it. That would be epic, man. That would be pretty Then crazy. they go there, stay, boot camp, then the next international tournament, Shamugam. And Vivian Balakrishnan Walk come out. out. Yeah, this Wow. <laughs> patrons, the patrons of Singapore Redemption football. up to the max, the man. Take over, take over. Wow, that one, that one win already. La. That one, the one you have my vote. You have my vote. I think we just pack up and go yeah, really. You have my vote. It's like it's like the ultimate prank, right? There, la, right? <laughs> all your, your, you can do that kind of like the decosh, the decosh review. La. Yeah, and so then yeah. include our voice snippets talking about right up road. And yeah, road. and then wow. Shamugo will be like, you see, Pritam, you know, uh, yeah. this was the plan all along yeah. you know um, and and I, I'm very disappointed that you all doubted our intentions Yeah. but here we go we are going to rescue Singapore football Yeah. Wow. once and for all oh, that I think Pritam also like okay lah uh, yeah. checkmate uh, checkmate. Uh, checkmate checkmate uh, but yeah uh, yes uh, anyone else has uh, plans as the new president of uh, FAS if you have an interesting plan to rescue Singapore football please let us know whether on the Reddit or hey even on our YouTube channel now, you know, because I think a lot of people are commenting, which brings us to our one shot comment mm. at this point. La. Harish, our, what is your one shot comment? Our one shot comment. So, my one shot comment is on the previous uh, podcast, uh, the one about uh, PM Lee ordering the review of Ride Out Road yeah. uh, Bungalows. It's on Reddit. Now, I must specify uh, because our YouTube is, is channel is getting a good amount of comments as well. It's by Rai Kota. Mm. Uh, who has commented before and they basically shared their experience of having lived in a black and white house before as a tenant. Yeah. Uh, admittedly, it was not as anywhere close to like a GCB, uh, but it was, according to them, huge enough that there was a big garden and a pool and a huge shed at the back. Um, and, and they go on to explain that it's not that they were rich, you yeah. know, like uh, the, with the rental and all, it's still, it's still something they could afford. Um, and how it it it's a different lifestyle la. there's a lot more privacy uh according to them their neighbors were introverted yeah. and they just shared the perspective that you know for if you are in a job that where you're always in the limelight and wanted to get away right yeah these kind of locations actually are are nice la, you know mm. uh, according to them it's like the equivalent of moving to the countryside yeah in other countries um so, so, I mean, they also said they're not trying to find excuses, but I thought that was an interesting perspective. La, and I appreciate them sharing their opinion because we did ask for people who have lived in black and white houses to share their thoughts. La. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was yeah. super interesting. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's not because, and they, yeah, they put the whole explanation there. It's not because we're fucking overflowing with money. That's why we, we decided to stay there or what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct, correct. So, yeah, do check it out, man. I mean, wow, I'm like fascinated that we get these kind of responses. Hell yeah, from man. From our audience. Hell yeah. yeah. Okay, um, and Terrence, what about you, man? Uh, and on the aforementioned uh, YouTube channel that we have, uh, Princess uh, Princess Wales, uh, with a lot of S's, uh, mentioned on our last podcast, went to the supermarket, confident about the new information I learned about bananas from the bros from Yalabad. So this person said, Auntie, I want a hand of bananas. <laughs> and then Auntie gives a bombastic side eye, saying, hand one hand, banana in front lah. <laughs> So you see, Harish, you have, you have unleashed this like uh, this monstrosity oh on Singapore supermarkets. God, people that, are like, why are people asking for hand of bananas? That is fucking great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that is great. Of course, I I mean we don't know if this is hundred percent real, but yeah, it's, it's yeah. pretty funny. I was gonna take it at face value, like. Yeah, it's pretty I'm funny. Take it at face value. Correct, correct. Wow, powers, yeah. Yes. Okay, now on for the one shock thing Terence do you have your one shock thing uh, yeah I do actually um, it's actually uh, related to the show Succession that mm. I've been watching uh, I think Vanity Fair did a video uh, some time ago about the composer who actually composed the o the opening tune for the show which is a very iconic part of the show la. I think everyone uh, loves the show the, the iconic opening tune because it's a blend of hip hop and classical and and very theatrical kind of music. Uh, yeah, so I was just watching the video and you know, the breakdown was great and everything. But uh, the crazy thing is that, that what I, I learned later was that the, the guy who composed the music for this HBO series and all 
was actually working in the corporate world in finance before he became a composer for Hollywood. Uh. Is it? Yeah. So he's like, like really, it was just like off the, off his interest and off the side of what he was doing for fun and all that. That he now has composed one of the most iconic tunes that you can hear on HBO. Uh. Mm. So yeah, he breaks it down and he talks about his process, which I thought was pretty amazing in this one video from Vanity Fair. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Right. Uh, my one shook thing is the trailer for one of my all-time favorite shows of uh, Netflix. You know, on Netflix is a new season. Uh, it's called I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson. Uh, it's okay. the season three trailer. Okay. Did you ever watch season one and two? No, never. It's basically like, you know, it's a, it's like a 20, 30 minute show with multiple skits in between. La. Okay. So it's like key and peel, but it's so weird, right? Yeah. It's awesome. La. Okay. And I mean, he gets... I, I, I don't know what his background is, but it's so weird and irreverent that I love it. La. Uh, I know it's not one of those that will re like reach mainstream success like mm -hmm. he and Bill, but there are a few skits that they have released on, on, on YouTube under mm. the Netflix channel. Mm. Uh, and if you like it, right, I tell you the whole thing, it is so awesome. I love the show. Mm -hmm. And it's an easy watch. Like, you get on, you watch one short clip and you just move on. La. Yeah. It's awesome. I love it. Oh, that's cool. When's it coming out? 30th May. 30th May, okay. 30th May, man. That's pretty soon. But cool, man. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. For the 400th time. Yeah. Uh, we will we will talk to you all soon, man. Yeah. Have a great weekend.